Coyote Railway, follow the tracks. Go out at sunset, sunrise, coming back. Ow! Hello, this is Joe Cottonwood, reading from my novel, Danny Ain't. Chapter 1. The Choice of Life Pop tells me when I was a baby, my mother gave me a test. She called it the Choice of Life. She laid me down on the floor and spread out in front of me a spoon, a deck of cards, a dollar bill, a book, a Bible, a ball. She said whatever I reached for first would be my choice of life. If I reached for the dollar, I'd grow up to be rich. If I reached for the cards, I'd be a gambler. The book, a teacher. The Bible, a preacher. The ball, an athlete. She was hoping I'd reach for the Bible. Pop says he was hoping I'd reach for the dollar, and maybe then for the cards. If you gave me the test today, I'd reach for the ball. But it's too late now. You only get one choice of life. What I reached for first was the spoon, which means I'll be hungry, poor, all my life. That is, if you believe in that stuff. I'm skinny as a blade of grass. I've got duct tape around my shoes. Where I live ain't even a house, but actually a trailer that used to be pulled behind a car. I was rich once. I won a $10,000 reward for catching a man who'd been setting fires all over town. That is, we split the reward three ways because three of us caught him together. Boone, Babcock, and me. So we each were going to get $3,333 and some cents. I waited months for that money. I figured to buy a dirt bike, a skateboard, a chainsaw. Then Pop said I was too young to blow all that money and he was going to take care of it for me. He said I don't need a chainsaw. The next day Pop was looking at a used Mustang, trying to haggle it down from 4100 to 3300 We never got the money. What happened was... Boone's father arranged for some guy named S. Crow Count to hold the reward in a bank until me and Boone and Babcock are 18 years old. Then we're supposed to use it to pay for college. Maybe Boone and Babcock will really go to college. Not me. When I'm 18, I'm buying a chainsaw. Pop got so mad at Boone's father and escrow count, the only way he could get over it was to play poker all day and all night. With me. We each started at ten in the morning with the same number of chips. Soon as Pop cleaned me out, he'd give me back my chips and start all over again. And again. Around four in the afternoon, I had a lucky streak and built up a nice pile. But Pop stood up and walked around his chair. Then Pop draws two wild deuces on a two-card draw when I'm holding three kings. And he wipes me out with four tens. Then Pop tells me, Never, ever let somebody walk around his chair. Kick it away. Trip him. Because walking around your chair changes your luck. And that ain't a superstition. That's a fact. I saw how it worked for Pop. So I keep on losing. I figure he'll want to stop for supper. But we don't. Then I figure we'll stop after midnight. But we don't. The longer we play, the better I get. But he still beats me. It just takes him longer. 4.30 in the morning, Pop rakes another handful of chips to his side, throws down the cards, tilts back his chair, and says, There! I did it! You know how much money I want off you, Danny? <sighs> I yawn, scratching my scalp. Dush, I say. 
He drops his chair forward and slams his fist on the table. The chips jump. $3,333. Maybe I should have felt bad because I lost $3,333. But I didn't. I felt fine except for being sleepy. And I'd learned to play poker. We went to bed. Pop in his room me in my closet, and slept until afternoon. Sleeping late left me groggy. Normal, I like to get up with the sun. I walked, sort of shuffling, to the sink to splash some water on my eyes and saw something move. A rat! He was standing on the faucet, stretching his body so he could sniff the bottom of the medicine cabinet. I didn't think, didn't choose... I just moved. I grabbed the plaster Elvis that Pop was using for a doorstop and heaved it at the rat. And missed. I hit the mirror and broke it to smithereens. Mirror and Elvis both. Dish. Pop slams his door and comes tearing out of his room in his underpants with a rifle. His eyes are big as baseballs. It's okay, Pop, I say as quick as I can. He stares at me, chest heaving. I threw the Elvis at a rat. I'm sorry. It broke. He drops the butt of the rifle to the floor and holds the barrel in his hand. He says, You get the rat? Dish. Missed. You broke the Elvis? And the mirror. I'm sorry, Pop. I'll clean it up. You broke the mirror? I told you, Pop's superstitious. Now he tells me I'll have seven years' bad luck unless I don't touch it for seven hours and then save the pieces for a night when there's no moon and no stars, and then I have to bury it in a graveyard at midnight. I tell Pop, I'd rather have the bad luck. Pop says, If you have bad luck living with me, I'll have bad luck, too. I don't believe that stuff. You sure, Danny? What's the best that could happen? If I bury it, the best that could happen is I lose half a night's sleep and make a trip to a graveyard. And? And I have good luck. Now, Danny, what's the worst that could happen? Seven years' bad luck? Seven years? Or one trip to a graveyard? Ain't the best worth the worst? You come with me, Pop? You scared? No. Probably be foggy. We could do it tonight. That's the end of this episode. This is Joe Cottonwood. The music is by Will Fort. Coyote freight train, rabbits in a line One day you're starving and the next day you're fine Ow-wee. Yip, 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 yip,